try to uh, teach something that can help somebody today. So I hope that that's you. So let's pray and ask the presence of the Lord here. Jesus, we love you, Lord. We praise you, mighty God. We thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, we just ask you to be part of our Bible study today. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, mental toughness is a concept that's in both sports and the military, but of course, uh, it's important also for the church. Uh, people uh, in the church need to have a mental toughness, and that's what I'm going to talk about today on how to have a Christian mental toughness. So here we go. Here's our outline. I'm going to talk about vain imaginations today, focus, the mind of Christ, and then finally, how to acquire mental toughness. So hang in there. It won't be long. Uh, we'll get right to it, shall we? Okay, vain imagination. Here's where the Bible talks about it in Romans 1, 21 through 24. Uh, Paul says, because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Now we can you know, go through three verses pretty quick and not much stick, so let's, let's kind of review it, shall we? Vain imagination. These are minds, your brain, absent of God's thoughts. Now God always makes a difference between your mind and your spirit. You'll see this, uh, the mind is often called... Uh, uh, just the mind and the spirit is called the heart. So uh, it's when your mind is absent of God's thoughts because God's thoughts travel from the heart, the spirit, up to the mind. And so when you, we are absent of those types of thinking, God's thinking, we have nothing but vain imagination in our coconut. Can you say praise the Lord? Vain imagination leads to pride because self-centered thoughts that come from self simply amp the flesh build me up, and that's not from God. Pride comes before a fall. Pride leads to idolatry. Uh, it won't be long if, you're, if you've got pride in your life that an idol will, will soon appear, and that idol will be things like uh, your image, okay? That's the thing we fear about losing most. We're, when we become Christians, we're afraid people will find out because of our image. Uh, we uh, can uh, fear of losing our money, our finances, uh, that's idolatry. We can uh, have all kinds of uh, things in our minds that shouldn't be there, that actually exalt us as opposed to Jesus Christ. And then idolatry leads to, the Bible says, uncleanness. And of course, uh, the ma uh, majority of the uncleanness comes from what we say, uh, who we associate with, uh, even sexual perversion. Un uncleanness leads to sexual perversions. And let me tell you, if you've been watching the news in Washington, D.C., we've got a lot of this going on because idolatry begins on Wall Street and ends up in Hollywood and Las Vegas. The, the two are always related, idolatry and uncleanness. Can you say praise the Lord? Okay, focus. What is focus all about? Well, here's the scripture. Jesus said, the light of the body is the eye. Okay, this is the light. And uh, <laughs> I know that they can correct vision now with not only glasses, but uh, they can do LASIK surgery. Uh, there's other things that they're doing with glaucoma. But Jesus says this, therefore, when your eye, our eye, is single or focused, the whole body is full of light. But when the eye is evil, and of course the evil eye was a term that came out of Egypt, uh, they thought that if you stared at somebody with an evil eye, you'd put a hex on them. But when your eye is evil, your body also is full of darkness. Now, we can't let this scripture just go by and not pay attention to it. What is Jesus talking to us about? First off, the single eye is focused on God. If our eye is single, we have to be focused on God. Many people think that, well, man, I've got to worry about my business. I've got to worry about my, uh, my marriage. I've got to worry about all these things that I've got to take care of. I, I don't have time to pray. But if we will focus on God, God begins to focus on our problems. If we focus on Him and do His work, He makes our work easy. Almost, <laughs> we don't have to do anything. God is so powerful. However, now, the evil eye is when we are distracted. We are concerned with worldly lusts and worldly pursuits. If you get up in the morning and the first thing you think about is your job or your kids or uh, your husband or your wife or uh, where you're going to get the money to pay the mortgage, etc., 
That's the evil eye. And what we have to do is we have to get focused. We have to get the single eye focused on God. Can you say praise the Lord? So, how do we do this? What we do is we get the mind of Christ. Now, this is what Paul says about the mind of Christ. But the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. There's the mind of Christ, the Spirit of God. For they look foolish to him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual discerns everything, and judgment is given him. For who can know the mind of the Lord in order to receive instruction? We can, for we have the mind of Christ. How do we get the mind of Christ? Well, the first thing to do is to lift your hands up and hallow his name. That's what the model prayer is all about. Hallowed be thy name. When we get up in the morning and praise the name of Jesus and begin our prayer that way, the mind of Christ begins to descend and fill our coconut, our heart, that leads into our, our mind. And that's what we need. We need to bring the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, into our heart so that it can travel to our mind. That's how we get the mind of Christ. And then the important things of the day will begin to reside right here. And maybe God will give you a business plan, or maybe God will tell you what to do about your kids, or maybe he will tell you uh, what grocery store you should go to, where you're going to get the best deal when you're shopping, anything that's important to you that, that God knows is, is uh, you're in need of. He can plant that there, and you'll get wisdom. You'll get the knowledge. The Spirit knows exactly what we need. We've got to get the mind of Christ. So begin our day. Begin our time with prayer. And then, of course, Paul says, I pray without ceasing. What does he mean? He means whenever he had a question he couldn't figure out, he prayed. He prayed in the spirit, that is, in tongues. And he prayed with understanding, that is, with his mind or his human spirit. So that's what we need to do. Pray in the spirit and with understanding and pray without ceasing. Can you say praise God? So uh, spiritual strength subdues. Uh, here's what Paul said. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 10. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. You, know, you can get a stronghold in your thinking. I'm going to talk about that here in just a minute. We destroy imaginations and every proud thought that's raised against the knowledge of God. What's a proud thought? It's a, it's a mind that doesn't have the mind of Christ. It's, it's just the, it's your mind that you own. It'll begin to exalt me as opposed to Jesus. So we take every thought captive to obey Christ. So, spiritual strength subdues vain imaginations, mental strongholds, prideful thinking. We've got to get the Spirit. We've got to have the Holy Ghost. We've got to praise Jesus and to bring His Spirit into our, our hearts that it can float up to our minds. Or I should say, flow down to our minds if we want to think of it that way. Mental toughness. How do we get this? Now, I studied uh, mental toughness as it related to athletes and prisoners of war, and I came across what I consider are some values. But I was going to ask some questions first that each of us need to ask. What is my purpose in Christ? What am I supposed to be doing? Where am I supposed to be going? What is God directing me to do? And the best way to know that is to plot where you have been in Christ and point towards where you are going. Your past will point to your future as long as that past is in Christ. Now your past that, that's before Christ, you can forget about that. <laughs> God certainly has. So what you need to do, and I need to do, is to plot where we've been in Christ. That will project where we are going. What's my purpose? Where have I been? Does God love me? Every Christian needs to answer this. Sometimes when the unlovable people in the church, our brothers, can uh, allow their flesh to uh, uh, take over, they can offend us. And we begin to question whether God loves us. Let me tell you something. God loves us no matter what we feel. If we operate our life on feeling, we are going to be dismayed. We are going to be deceived. We've got to have a knowledge of what the Word says. And God so loved us that He gave His only begotten Son. Okay? He loves me. You can't deny that. It's in the Bible. And God's not changing His mind. Well, you don't know what I've done, uh, Dwight. You don't know the sins that I've committed. Hey, i got my own list. <laughs> you don't know the ones that I've done. And uh, condemnation is when we think that our sins are greater than God's love for us. That's condemnation. Romans 8.1, there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. So get your mind right. God loves me. Know what the Word of God says. Now, no, not all men and brothers love me the way God does because we're flesh. The expectation is that I have a perfect pastor and a perfect church and perfect people. Get rid of that idea. We're all flawed, okay? 
The Bible says that all of us sin. We eventually sin. We're not, we don't have a sin nature, but we will eventually sin because we don't always have the mind of Christ and fleshly thoughts can deceive us and we can do the wrong thing. Forgive people, okay? Just let it go. Uh, ask God to help you to forgive if you struggle with that. Can you say praise God? Do I love myself? Many people have been taught not to love themselves. That's from uh, usually a parental uh, upbringing where parents are constantly criticizing and not building up, uh, no affection in the home. That kind of thing can cause a child to think that I'm not lovable. So what we have to do when we become Christians, we have to ask Jesus to help us to love ourselves. Let me tell you something, that cures a lot of mental illness, which isn't really a mental illness, it's a spiritual deformity. God loves me, I have to love myself, and then I can see clearly how to love others. So we need to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Loving myself has to come before loving my neighbors, or I'll never see how to do it. We need to just figure out what God is saying. How do I obtain the mental toughness, the mind of Christ? <laughs> how do I get that? Well, when I studied all these uh, prisoners of war, uh, these are the things that I came up with, four core values that they had to, to endure their captivity and athletes to, to go past the pain and to hit a higher level. So um, let's just go through them here. Number one, that principle and truth is more important than temporary pain. They hung on to this. Uh, the guy that I uh, uh, really uh, esteem is a man named George Bud Day. You can uh, find out about him, Medal of Honor winners on YouTube. George Day, I suggest you put that into your YouTube search and understand who he was and the kind of person that he was. He came away with principle and truth is more important than pain, and he suffered greatly in the Hanoi Hilton after the Vietnam War. Uh, the second thing is I have to have faith to die to my own will, and then if I love myself, I can love my brothers and lay down my life for my friends. This was the mind of Christ. I have to have faith to die to my own way of thinking, my own philosophies. A lot of people create their own religions out of philosophies. They don't know their Bible. Uh, I have to have faith to die to my will and say, I need to know what the Word of God says. I need to listen to the Spirit of God. I need to uh, have Jesus help me to lay my life down for my friends. The third value, uh, core value of mental toughness is integrity and honor. Now, when we hear the word integrity, we usually think of honesty. And of course, many of these senators and politicians today have lost their honor and their integrity. Uh, they're hypocrites. Uh, they want the money and the power that goes with an office, but they don't want to be a person of integrity. They're running from their past. A lot of accusers out there right now. Never let the devil encourage me to tear down the brothers in the church. Sometimes when people disappoint us, we can run our mouth and run them down. But what George Day did is that he understood that his communist captors tried to get him to denigrate the United States of America and our system. That's what they wanted most. They didn't care about the technology in his airplane. They simply wanted him to run down his authority, his leaders, and to focus on their weaknesses, not on their strengths. And that's what we have to do. We have to look for something good. Uh, recently, I had some guys come in here and look at the configuration of our studio, and all they focused on was a negative. They didn't see anything positive. That tells me they've got an empty cup, half empty all the time. Can you find your children doing something right? Can you find something good about your friends? Can you focus on their strengths? Can you put away their weaknesses and don't focus on those and think that, hey, they're not like Christ? Hey, there isn't a person on this planet who is totally like Christ, and yours truly is no exception. All of us fall short, and uh, we need to understand that that's just part of hum humanity. Uh, when Jesus perfects us in the resurrection, that's all going to go away, but we're not there yet. Integrity and honor, never run down the brethren. Now, some of them probably deserve to be run down. Keep your thoughts to yourself, find a confidant that you can get it all to your heart to talk to, and that's a good thing. But don't run them down. Don't curse with your lips. And then finally, communicate and pray with others. It's the lifeblood of unity. Now, most of uh, our problems could, be, could dissolve instantly if we just have somebody to have a prayer meeting with. The Word of God will come. The power of God will come. Uh, the mind of Christ will come. God made us to be social creatures. We've got to be part of the body of Christ. We have to have brothers and sisters we trust that have 
been proven to be trustworthy, and trust has to be earned before it's granted. Uh, trust has to be tested. We've got to try the spirits. But then we need to communicate and pray with others, and that creates unity, okay? It's just one of those things. So those are the four core values of mental toughness, how to get it. You might want to write them down and, and pray about them every day for a while. Okay, that's where we're going to stop. I just wanted to say here at the close of uh, the Bible study today is that uh, we are um, really trying to make a difference with uh, all the, uh, the people that are watching this channel. So if you can forward these uh, teachings, if you feel they're worth it for somebody to help them, it's an easy way to witness. Also, um, your, your comments are appreciated. You can comment on the YouTube channel, and uh, I do try to answer every one of those. If you've got a question, right over here, you can email me, and I will uh, try to answer your questions the best that I can. I'm not perfect. I'm not uh, omniscient, nor am I infallible, so uh, just keep that in mind. Well, God bless you, and we'll see you next time.